Well, hey everyone, Catherine and Erica here from Catherine Puller Designs. Welcome to A Crafty Christmas with Catherine and Friends. We are going to be joining you here on YouTube on Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern for six sessions of holiday inspiration and card making. Today we're kicking off with a pink holiday card. Think pink we'll for the holidays. More about that. Yeah. <laughs> and then we will be followed by four of our industry friends. So we have Daniel West, we have Aaron Thompson, we have Laura Evangeline, and Rebecca Keppel coming with different techniques, tricks, tips, and beautiful ideas for holiday projects. Let's dive into tonight. I'm excited because I'm going to pull out, well, we already have pulled out mm -hmm. tons of snowflake products, pink <laughs> things, and I'm going to get a little messy. So Catherine, why pink for the holidays? My birthday <laughs> is highlighted by the color pink and snowflakes. And so I like pink snowflakes. And they're not just for Catherine's birthday. They're for the whole holiday season. <laughs> so every year I make pink snowflake cards. Pink so snowflakes I brought thought it to would you make by Catherine. sense to kick <laughs> off this series with pink snowflakes. Yeah. Let's go. I love let's it. Let's do it. Woo. So we gathered all the flakes. All, all the all flakes, flakes yes. are here. So we have the embroidered snowflake stencil. We have the, the snowfall stencil. The snow mini flakes oh. dies. Yes. Uh huh. Winter frames slimline dies. Keep pointing at them. These two <laughs> snowflakes stair step in with those. So you have all different sizes here. Adding these two snowflakes into this mix. Beautiful things happen. We have scrolling snowflake stamp set. We have cuddle weather, cuddle weather sentiments. If kisses were snowflakes, I'd send you a blizzard. So I love cute. that. And then the Alpine Village. This stamp set is so cute. Love these little houses, love the trees, and it has fantastic sentiments. Snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes. Silver, white winters that melt into springs. Fantastic. These are a few and things. <laughs> we might be doing a little sneaky sneak. So we have a winter release coming out on October 25th. Snowflakes will be included. We'll see if one of those sneak onto this project. Yeah. <laughs> Who's rooting for that? You can't have a winter collection without some snowflakes. We're going to do a little mixed media-ish situation things, fun things going on here. I just wanted to do a little ink blending some cotton candy onto my watercolor cardstock. So you're using watercolor cardstock, which makes me know that some water is gonna come into play. Water is going to be involved. Or maybe watercolors or whatever. Some kind of medium. And you guys, you can use regular stock, but sometimes when regular stock gets wet or too much medium, it'll like kind of curl up. So just use your discretion. Sometimes I make projects and then just sit them under a book to dry. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Adding a little It's a Girl, that's a little darker shade of pink, then cotton candy, darken up some spots. I think I'm gonna save the party dress for some stamping. Okay. I love that you left the center with no color. And I don't know what's gonna happen next. I don't either. We're playing. <laughs> I have a block. I have some of these. Uh -huh. We can use the Gonzai Starry Colors if we want some gold or white gold. We can also use the opal colors. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. It gives a good snow feel. Opal blue, opal violet, opal pink. Yes. yes please and thank you. Again, with the... Um, I say again, because I've talked about this before, but depending on how much water you put into this is how concentrated the pigment of the actual paint will be. So if you get it really, really wet, you're going to get a lot of water on your piece as well. If you get it less wet, the paint's kind of like thicker and then you get more concentration of the color. I have some green something or other uh -oh. in my paint well. That happens sometimes. We'll just clean that out and get going again. Give it a flickety doo -dah. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. 
Now this paint is going to, where it touches that pink uh, dye ink, that ink's going to wick up into the paint a bit, and it's going to tint it a bit, which is going to be really pretty. Catherine. Mm, yes, thank nice. you. Thank mm -hmm. you. We'll let that dry. Before we move along, I just wanted to take a quick second to talk about watercolor paper. So for card making, I'm not terribly picky about the watercolor paper that I choose. The two that I'm using in my craft room currently are the Art Philosophy and the Canson watercolor paper. They're both 40 pound, they're both cold press, and they work great for card making. So I have some watercolor cardstock and I have different kinds of shimmer paints. So we have the opal colors, Opal Colors, yes, <laughs> by Gonzai Tombi, and the Starry Colors. These have been so popular for so many years, but I wanted to show you some other options as well. So the Art Philosophy watercolors are really great too. I have the Shimmering Lights and the Pastel Dreams. There are other color choices, but these are the two that I have out right now. These are the cutest little palettes. They come in little squares. They're wrapped and then unwrap them, test them all out. You can make a cheat sheet and just keep everything in your little tin. Super cute. The Shimmering Lights is your metallic palette. Also with pink. I mean, why not? <laughs> and so I wanted to compare specifically the white gold from the Shimmering Lights with the champagne. And I thought it would show up well if I took suede shoes and colored my cardstock. Oh wow, look at that color. Woo! And then we have a nice deep blue watercolor piece of cardstock here that is going to show up really great with the colors. Let me grab some paint brushes. First, I want to do the art philosophy. So let's try out a couple of these. I want to do the chandelier, so that's the white. And let's just put some water in a couple of these other pots and let that start mixing. You don't want them to mix into each other because that will change the color. So try to keep them apart there. And then for the Gonzai, let's do white gold, yellow gold, champagne gold. So once you get your water in there, just let it sit. Let's try the white first. Load up that paintbrush. Flick, flick, flick. Let's see what it looks like painted on there. Oh yeah. So that is activating the ink because it's water reactive and it's kind of sucking that color up into the paint so it's going to turn blue. And let's see what this one looks like. This one is called Treasure. Oh, so pretty. And then glaze. A nice orangey metallic. We'll set that one aside. Now let's try the Gonzai Tombi. So we'll do white gold first. Let's try champagne gold. Oh yeah, very nice. And yellow gold. So the Gonzai is on the left, the Art Philosophy is on the right. And as they're drying, they are very similar in look. The metallic shimmer, is very similar. The tinting that the paint is getting from wicking up the, the ink is very similar. So I, I don't think you can go wrong with either palette. They both look awesome. I'm adding a little heat to speed up the drying time. And as I do that, you can really see that wet paint changing color there and getting lighter or lightening up the ink color. So you got to heat the back now so it'll curl the other oh, direction. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. I don't know if this is all the way dry yet. 
I thought it would be fun to add to this background some stenciling and some stamping. Oh, both. So we'll stamp, we'll stencil, we'll dippity doo da, mm -hmm. and we're gonna have a good time. <laughs> And we suggest that you at home also dippity doo dah while you're making <laughs> your holiday cards. <laughs> and while we have you here, friends, tell us what that means to you. <laughs> what does dippity doo dah mean? Yeah, tell us in Erica, the chat. What does it mean? Well, it means whatever you want. Yeah, <laughs> it's giving it a little dip. <laughs> you're dipping in that ink, but you're doing it with cheer and joy. Oh yes, see. it's not just dipping. It's <gasps> dippity doo dah. So pretty. Mm. If you're new to Catherine Pooler inks, they're amazing. We have a foam pad. They're very squishy. Foam releases ink really easily so that when you ink up, tap, tap, and you stamp. Ta -da. So check it. Boom. I have a gorgeous solid stamped snowflake. Super easy. Very little effort. Gorgeous. And I wanted one more snowflake, maybe kind of down here a bit. Oh, so pretty. You know, It's a Girl used to be our lightest pink, and it felt really light until we got cotton candy. Yeah. And then it's like, wow, that's a brighter pink than I remembered it being. <laughs> Erica wanted me to use some sequins, so she pulled the Patagonia sequins for me today. I think these are wonderful. Definitely going to make – these are going to make their way onto the project. And I'm making a pink snowflake card, so I said to her – why did you pull these colors? <laughs> well, uh, excuse me, I said pink. Because <laughs> they went with Patagonia. So Yeah, so if you are wanting to make a non-traditional color palette for your holiday cards and you want to pull in some other colors with the pink, these colors are going to be just gorgeous to add in with your snowflakes. You get that icy blue of Tranquil and the wintergreen and sea glass are just really kind of chilly yeah. willy blue green colors so oh this is looking pretty love it next i wanted to add some stenciling i thought it would be fun just to stencil a couple of these different things that i can use i think we even have a snow texture paste in the shop oh but i thought it would be fun to use simon's solar paste mm -hmm. and this is a white paste but it has mica in it and this one is purple. So I thought that would be fun to go with the pink, and I thought it would look really nice. And you can add um, some ink refill to that and create kind of a color to it. But I like that you're just going to go with it straight in the white, because that's going to add a lot of icy, snowy, sparkle and shine to the card without additional color. And I feel like you've got a monochromatic situation going on, so yes. it's going to help balance that. Absolutely. I could mask this off so that I'm only getting solar paste in the places that I want it, or I can go freehand like this. <laughs> I think I did okay. Then the solar paste, because it's wet and it's touching our water reactive, water-based oh dye inks. You guys, that's stunning. It will wet the ink that it touches and that color will wick up into the solar paste ever so slightly. So it will turn slightly pink. pink. And then it'll be fun right here because this is white and this is on pink. So we'll see what happens as it dries. Oh, that is I feel so like you need cool. one more sort of over yeah, here. Yeah, I, I was like thinking a big one. Okay. What do you think? Here, it. over here, I think, I think over here. Kind of going off the card a smidge? Yeah. Yeah, well, either way. Hmm. Oh, I want to do this one. I don't think you can go wrong. Let's go here. Give a little tape so it Just doesn't be, slide. Yep. Be mindful that your top part hasn't dried yet. Oh, I know what I can do. Here we go. There and there. That will help. Hmm. I am loving this. Oh, this is much easier. Yeah. If Highly recommend the mask. Wanted to be a little more precise, even you could try like Heffy Doodle Memo Tape, which we carry in the shop, and that would be perfect for masking off while you stencil. But oh. that works. Paper works. Improvising That's is right. the way of card making champions. 
All right, are you ready? This is going to be stunning. Da, da, da. Oh, my goodness. That is a stunner. So pretty. Oh, yeah. That I love this beautiful. pilot on card. I feel like I need something up there, or maybe I don't. If you're going to add the die cuts, maybe you don't need anything else. That's true, because I have all of these snowflakes that we're going to add and a sentiment. So lots of options. So let's go ahead and let this dry. Magic of TV. While we're waiting for this to finish drying, we will move on with the sentiment. So I thought the snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes, I think that's pretty perfection. It is. It's going to be a holiday card meant for Christmas. You can put a Christmas sentiment inside the card if you want. You can leave it blank. Or, I mean, maybe you don't want it for a Christmas card. Maybe you want it a birthday card. I was just looking at this from across the desk, and look what's happening here on that stamped image part. Yeah, it's really pretty. It's so cool. I hope you guys get the full effect of it on camera. It's amazing. I thought vellum would be fabulous for this. And we need to use the handy dandy powder tool. Yeah, and the vellum kind of keeps with the thing we were talking about earlier is about like with using this monochromatic color combo, not adding too much that's going to compete. It just keeps it really nice and soft and subtle yeah. while still having bold and icy. Bold. Oh, the word just flipped right out of my head. It flipped out. <laughs> bold things on your card? Bold things mm -hmm. on your card? No, well, that's not what I meant to say. <laughs> anyway, Lots of texture. On. This card is going to have a lot of texture. Uh, white puff. Halo. Sparkling snow. Where's my Fair. white embossing pack? Okay. Opaque, bright white embossing yeah, powder. The old, the the old classic. I like embossing on vellum because it's really easy just to funnel that back into your container. Get out that trusty heat tool. Don't forget to heat from the bottom and the top. Otherwise, your paper will warp in one way. Then you got to warp it in the other way. Keep it flat. We're going top to bottom and bottom to top is going to help keep that flat flat. Then I'm using the note card frames and tags. How about me with that title? Yes. Knowing that right off the bat. I really like that one a lot. If that's one that you don't have and there are, they're just really handy dandy pieces for a lot of different I things. love this banner. I thought the banner would go with some of this. <gasps> the embroidery floss I thought would be really stunning. Adding some metallic to the card. Yeah. I had pulled a standard dandered yeah. twine. Yeah, pop it in. Let's this see what you were pulling. That thought, that thought, that I thought was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and but I said. I like the silver. Yeah. Do we have gold as well? I think we do. We have several options. We have red and green and different things. Okay. Like a champagne-y color would be nice. I love how fine that is. And you get, again, more texture. We'll trim the ends off here just a bit. It'll be ready to adorn the card. And then I have different snowflakes. I want to add a couple of these. I also was thinking about adding this one. Where did that yeah, I know. You haven't seen this before. That is coming out in our October winter release, hitting the shop October 25th. So stay tuned for all of those reveals coming soon. So at this point, I've just got to say it. You could emboss these snowflakes, which you're looking at. What are you choosing from? Halo is an embossing glitter. It's basically clear embossing powder with a clear iridescent glitter in it. Then we have white puff. That is white, and as you heat it, it puffs up, so that's really cool for Santa's beard, for snowflakes, bunnies, bottoms, things like that. There's sparkling snow. We also have white puff twinkle, which is missing in action at the moment, but any of those are going to be great. Also, white puff twinkle, I was noticing in the shop, we're really low on stock. You could mix white puff and halo together to get that look. I was thinking I just want Halo. What's well, that one? That's White Puff Twinkle. 
You okay. could also use your medium again. Um, you could add some ink refill to the medium and make it like a pinker. Ooh. You also could just do direct to paper and squidge it down into the ink pad and make a, a cotton candy colored um, snowflake. So with these snowflake dyes, I just want to say the possibilities are endless mm -hmm. of ways that you could embellish them, color them, make them sparkly, and finish them off for your card. Whatever makes your heart happy. One. One and a half, one and three quarters. I'll give that to you. <laughs> okay. Just doing the two? Yeah, let's do two. I could also sparkle this. Just take your snowflake, dab it straight on top of that embossing pad. And Erica, sorry. <laughs> oh golly. We're doing another one. I oh, said yeah. I said I said two. I lied. I was so intent on cleaning that up that I you just were, ignored you. You you were. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now I'm done. Now she's done. Now I'm done. <laughs> I think. We'll uh -oh. see what happens. If you got enough. With that one, if you had just immediate, like stamped it right away and then just dipped it, you still could have got some cool shimmer. That would have been fun too. Yeah, if you did that, well, let's see. Let's do it real quick. Okay. So we're going into it again. Let's see what that looks like. So we're going to ink up. Actually, this is a different stamp. Let me grab this one. It has a little more surface area. So this is the new stamp. It's coming out October 25th. When you stamp it, let me get this ready. Halo embossing glitter. Here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How many times are you going to clean this halo embossing glitter Seven. up? So we'll stamp it and then very quickly pour your embossing glitter over the top. I'll help you out. <laughs> <laughs> and then the embossing glitter is mostly going to stick to where the ink was. We can heat that. Because our ink stays damp just for a couple seconds. And that just gives you a hint of sparkle. Yeah. It's a lighter effect, but it still works. Okay. Heavy? Not so heavy. Heavy, light, heavy, light. I love that shimmer. Oh, that looks oh. so pretty. And then here. I'm here for this pilot on snowflake card. I kind of felt like giving this a real artistic look where, you know, we have watercolor cardstock here. And then I thought if I just did a little tear along the end, you know, sometimes I see cards or pieces of watercolored artwork that have a rough edge and then the end is kind of curled. I like that look. It feels very fancy. So I thought that would be fun to add to the bottom of the card. Eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock cut in half, then scored in half. Yep, we're just going to adhere this right to the card base. And then we'll start assembling all the little accents. I like the curly bottom vibe. Thanks. You know what I was thinking? Not for this card, but for um, that look, you could take a brown neutral and like take your blending brush and just kind of kiss that rough edge. Oh, yes. Um, Back in the day, my mom used to do tea staining on mm -hmm. paper and she would rich, rip it and stuff and burn it to make it look old. And that would have a cool effect. Use a little brown. I like that. Uh, ink. Oopsie doodles. I just used a little bit of that liquid glue under where the words are. This is not 100% dry yet. I'm making some boo-boos there. Oops. I forgot to tuck this. We'll tuck in a sec. Give it a little tuck. That looks really beautiful. Love it. You can stop here. Don't stop. <laughs> I won't.
Let's add in the rest of the snowflakes, some sequins. I don't think you can go wrong with placement. So pretty. And then I'm just going to add a few dots of glue to sprinkle some sequins around the design. I do like the addition of those die cut snowflakes. Thank you. Because it gives a little bit more um, dimension. So much dimension, so much texture on this card. Yeah. Ooh, I love those mirrory blue ones. They're so icy. Yeah, I agree. And I like how they pick up the pink. They're really pretty. Oh, a little tuck there. Nice tuck, nice tuck. Thanks. <laughs> we were discussing how people have different sequin technique, and Catherine's a tucker. Love talking a sequin. Clear and icy. Pink, okay. Um, which one? Which it's one? so hard. Which one this right? one right here. I'll do it. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so, my first card to kick off this holiday card series, Crafty Christmas with Catherine and Friends 2023. Yeah. Think pink, people. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're new, make sure you hit, well, subscribe. Subscribe. Like, share. comment, share. <laughs> so let's start. Subscribe, Subscribe. like, like, share. share, and comment. All the things, four things, four pieces of homework for you before you go to your card studio or your craft table or your craft corner or wherever it is that you do your crafting. Your dining room. The coffee table. <laughs> yeah. Wherever it is. So we will see you again next Sunday. Our good buddy Daniel West will be doing the next video in the series. I can't wait to see what he's going to do. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say a little something. Oh. I'll leave it as a surprise. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.